What's going on, guys? Welcome into your Energy News Beat here on this chilly February 16th, 2021. As always, I'm your humble, humble correspondent, Michael Darren, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Denver, Colorado, joined by the executive producer of the purveyor of the show, the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, and slightly frozen Stuart Turley. How you doing today, my man? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, uh, but it was 40 degrees in my cabin today. Yeah, it's you were joking with me. It's why you call it a summer cabin. <laughs> Holy smokes, it was cold. It was cold. But guys, we have a great show for you lined up. You can check what we have and a bag of chips out to my left there. But first, guys, continue to subscribe to the world's greatest YouTube channel, Energy News Beat, um, the best place for all your energy finance use. Check us out online, www.energynewsbeat.com. If you, it's the best place for all of your energy finance news. Click the notifications button in the bottom right. It's legit just an IV drip of news. I've got my bag sitting behind us. If you need all of the stories injected into your veins, no better place than Energy News Beat. I mean, we got to just quickly dive into the equity markets here. Let Stu unfreeze for a little bit before we drag him in. Equity markets, um, pretty flat today. SP, you know, top line indices, SPY up a tenth of a percentage point. NASDAQ down about two tenths of a percentage point. Dow Jones down three tenths of a percentage point. Couple things. We're seeing 10 year treasury yields um, used as a barometer for mortgages, student loans, and credit cards. That rises um, above what was the number here? 1.28 currently trading at, which is about, you know, for the first time since March, it jumped eight basis points. Um, a fresh one-year high, about 1.28 to end the day. And so what that means is it's now, you know, all this bull run we're seeing. So you remember, low interest rates have everything to do with how much money can be borrowed by big banks. And if big banks can't borrow money at low rates, you're going to see that begin to unwind in other places. It's going to be harder to lend. Credit card interest rates are going to go up. We're also going to see... Um, um, all of these valuations get squeezed a little bit because debt metrics don't look as good because JP Morgan now can't go borrow at 1.0%, you know, or 0.8% and they can't, so they can, you know, we're seeing all this 2.25% bond debt get thrown around in the EMP space. That goes away with 10 year treasury yields rising. So that's why I point that out specifically. Here's Art Hogan, national securities, chief market strategist, higher yields while good for banks are hitting bond surrogate sectors like REITs, utilities, and staples energy. Okay. Remember that guys. The market can digest rising yields, especially when they're going for the right reason, but not when they continue to go up in a linear fashion. So watch out for those interest rates. Energy sector was up 2.2 percentage points today. I wonder why, which we'll cover here in a little bit. Um, but first, Bitcoin tops 20, uh, 50,000. A little backpedal a little bit. Currently trading 58 uh, or $48,000 um, right now. But we saw 50,000 on Bitcoins do so good that crude oil up 1.3 percentage points. The bulls are back in town. Maybe it's cold outside. Currently trading 60. 13 up one percentage point brent above 63.42 uh that's a half a percentage point back into the curve still looking at 56 40 so we've now gone we've now gone from hard backwardation to in contango like that um natural gas talk about a bull run baby three dollars and 12 cents that's 7.4 percentage points on the day again i wonder why back into the curve up six tenths of a percentage point um xop which are emp securities contracts i mentioned was up 3.5 percentage points um the s p energy sector includes um a couple other things it includes utility or not utilities it includes midstream it includes uh inter integrated oil companies the xop contract that i looked at is a little different of a subset only has specific upstream companies so that's where that difference Difference comes in upstream does even better there as i mentioned up 3.6 percentage point oil food service up 3.5 percentage point some of our biggest movers we'll start on the downside Peabody Energy, Thermal Coal doesn't have a good day. They're down 1.4 percentage points. Enterplus, they're down 2.5 percentage points. Alliance Resource Partners, they're down 3 percentage points. And NACO Industries, they are down 3.6 percentage points. On the upside, big numbers. Camber Energy up 16 percentage points. Silverbow up 16 percentage points. Sanchez Midstream, swing at high, 17 percent. Houston America Energy Corporation, they're up 19 percent. And Battalion Oil Corporation, they are up 23 percentage points. Stu, internationally, what's going on? going on Ooh, uh, well i think um uh, germany is just as cold as i am here at uh, my lake house uh germany seeks a deal with biden on controversial nord stream 2 pipeline because they need gas they need to it. supply their renewable you know they're one of the world's leaders in renewable energy the Nord Stream 2 pipeline is about 770 miles long, and it goes from Russia all the way through underwater to Germany. 
Well, a couple uh, tidbits in there. And Michael, uh, Germany, EU, and the U.S. officials are in talks about a package measure which seeks to enhance Ukrainian stability and energy sovereignty. They're trying to say also, we want to put some insurance that Russia won't be mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna. Nice. Yeah, how do you like that one? Or what? They're and, gonna throw a temper tantrum? Uh, no. Hey, you do, uh, We make gas for twenty cents, and we charge you eighty dollars. No, I, who cares, man? They're gonna be. The, if you don't get along with Putin, no gas. Here's the thing. Construction on a pipeline returned in the Danish waters on January 6th with Fortuna. We covered that. A Russian ship slapped with sanctions during the Trump administration. Work is largely to be completed even with sanctions, Michael. Okay, you look like you're bored. Here we go. Well, no, it's well, just I, – I, I was just thinking about um, – we were talking about responsibly sourced natural gas. We start calling it conflict gas. Like conflict oh, yeah. diamonds, we'll start calling it conflict gas. Yeah, instead of blood diamonds. Here we go. Here's the other one. Uh, real quickly, Iraq in advance talks to build storage in China and other countries. Okay, try this on. McDonald's built the playground so that parents would drive in and you would get stuck eating a dang McDonald's hamburger. Same thing with um, Iraq. They're now building storage tanks around the world, so they have to buy your oil. Love it. Good marketing. Here we go. Coming around the corner, and that one's going to be for you in a minute. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover all that. Um, I need you to start throwing your papers more often. That was great. Um, <laughs> only on the International News Desk can you get a Chinese oil storage comparison in McDonald's, folks. It, this is as good as programming as you can get. Appreciate that, <laughs> Stu. Um, you can check out all of those stories via the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com. I don't know if you knew this, Stu. But it's cold outside right now, and a lot of people are losing power. So let's backtrack, guys. I'm sure everybody who's listening is, whether you're on Twitter, whether you're on LinkedIn, whether you just have family who lives throughout that Midwest, everyone is, is what? What is going on with the Texas power grid? We're going to try to walk people through. Okay, so right now about 4 million people are out of power. And why are they out of power? Well, unseasonably low temperatures throughout the Midwest, specifically in Oklahoma and Texas, have absolutely damaged the energy infrastructure grid. It started about, what, Stu, Friday, Thursday night in Oklahoma, and then that cold yeah. spurt really came down into Houston. There's about six inches of snow somewhere between Midland and Houston, um, and, and I just want to run quickly through some of the top-line stuff. So, as I mentioned, we've got a couple things going on. We've got frozen, um, or I guess, let, let's back up here. Currently, current situation, 4 million homes without power across Texas. That's on Tuesday today, according to data compiled by PowderOutage.us. There's another 400,000 down in states stretching from Louisiana all the way up to Virginia. And there's another 250,000 without power in Oregon. So it's not just a Texas problem, even though we're going to harp on Texas right now, because it's pretty unbelievable. Right now, 30% of Texas's total wind farm capacity is offline. Due to the fact that it's frozen, 3 million barrels of Permian oil is offline due to the fact that you can't update your pipes. The um, South Texas nuclear facility has been shut down, which is about 5 to 10% of baseload capacity. And solar has been completely taken offline due to the fact that it's been destroyed. So every single different energy source has been knocked offline due to the fact that we have had unseasonably low temperatures. In Dallas, they saw temperatures as low as 2 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 17 degrees Celsius. Late Monday, there's going to reach a high of 29 by Wednesday, according to the National Reserve Service. But by late Thursday, readings will drop back down into the teens. We've got frozen wind farms, which is about 25% of the state's energy mix. 30% of that is shut down, while wind isn't solely to blame. As Wood McKenzie mentions, um, they estimate there's about 27 gigawatts of coal, nuclear, and gas capacity that is un unavailable, part because it's just the, the demand has driven up and, and they didn't have the load. So, Stu, here's, you know, and I want to bring you in on this because I know you have some thoughts, but, but 
I, I was sitting back today. I was I, I was watching everybody argue. We were I was watching natural gas boys get all upset at the renewables boys. We've got a great meme up on the oil and gas uh, energy news B meme headquarters. I think it was from BSB bomber uh, taking that uh, anchorman, uh, the famous anchorman fight. It, it was one of the funniest things I'd ever seen. The point is, I've seen all these different stakeholders fight back and forth. You got wind, you got the solar people, you got coal, you got all these people arguing over who's to blame. And guess what? They all have a point. You, I can go stand in any one of these groups and make a point that the other person sucked. But when really, in my opinion, the issue and what happened to Texas was a failure of infrastructure. I'm sitting here in Colorado, Stu. It's been colder for two weeks. And I've got my heat cranked up to 75. I've got a heater on in here. You know, we've got, I'm, I'm sucking power like it's my job. I looked at my energy bill. We, we've cranked up over the past three days. But why? We have, our infrastructure was set up this. So I think the what's missing in this whole conversation of who is to blame for the fact that 4 million people are out of electricity. One, it's ERCOT. But two, it's just bad energy infrastructure planning. You can't just say renewables are bad because they're shut down because you got 3 million barrels in the Permian offline. All right, rant over, Stu. Your opinion. You're sitting. Uh, we won't give away your exact location in Oklahoma, but you've had, you've been affected by this. Oh, yeah, uh, less so than others because I got a hydro dam sitting right there, yes. and, the, and the Corps of Engineers, is uh, they love us around here. Okay, that being said, Mexico has got 4.6 million people offline and a shorter distance because they're tied to the Texas grid. That Texas grid overflow in overflow overflowed into Mexico. Here's where it goes in. We have these 1.9 trillion dollars going into uh, billions of it going to other countries. Why don't we spend money? I'm going to rant for a second. Why don't we spend money on our infrastructure grid so we can do solar, wind, nuclear, have a great day, and uh, take care of this? Let me go ranting on Abilene right now. The people in Abilene now have no water for up to four to five days, period. It's not because of water. It's because the three pumping stations, which affects five cities, they don't have backup power. Who designs a water system without backup? I'm sorry. I'm no, getting it's absolutely off. criminal. As I was Joe, as we used to always joke, I'm a Colorado School of Mines grad. Those engineers probably didn't go to mines because the first thing you design is redundancy yes, on redundancy on redundancy. How many backups do you have in your cabin? Six. That's sad. There you go. How come we can't have a backup power supply for our for for a town's water supply? I, and here's the sad part. Uh, my parents uh, lived there. They drew water because they knew their pipes sometimes froze. They have enough water to last four or five days. Guess what? All the apartments around them with low income folks None. do not. They have kids. They can't go to the bathroom. They can't wash. This is a severe health problem thanks to incompetency. Thank you. And the problem is if it, 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 you can't just we're not just bringing more of this stuff online it, this is going to be a problem for the next week in the next six months in the next year yes i think some of these issues can be solved i read a lot of articles on there's just the, the you know really there, there there's a way to make wind farms work you have to apply all of these gels the gels are expensive though so to make all this renewable even if you have, you know break even if you're using gels ah, well now the math doesn't make sense so where do they get those gels oil Hey, uh, another one, Bank of America came out today and they said that uh, uh, oil demand is going to go up because of renewables. I'm trying to get more details on that, but it's all of a sudden they're going, whoa, we're going to be doing more oil because we're going to renewables. It's going to be fun. Yeah, that seems fun. That seems fun. You know, <laughs> I, I specifically warn my don't mess with Texas shirt. Um, because all, clearly if you just, you just need six inches of snow and sub 30 degree temperatures to mess with Texas. So uh, my wife has had power on for an hour, power on off for an hour, power on, uh, my other family's, uh, got no power. So I'm sitting pretty actually here in my sub Arctic. Yeah. 
Everything's bigger in Texas, except the redundancy on the electrical grid. Except the redundancy on the electrical grid. And we're going to end with that right there, because we probably lost about half the people that watch this show, because they come from Houston. Um, for Stuart Turley, I'm Michael Tanner. Guys, thank you for checking us out. Please stay warm if you are in Texas, and we will see you guys tomorrow on the Energy Beat.